Hello community, today we're gonna talk about a chain of thought versus instruction tuning. And I would say, hey, we are about to embark on a journey that's more complex than a 3D puzzle on a fractal. We are diving into the deep end of in-context learning and instruction fine-tuning to optimize our prompt structure for complex language model interrogation. So this isn't a kitty ride, it is more like a hyperloop journey into the heart of logical reasoning with a pit stop at Wittgenstein, Tractatus, Logicus, Philosophicus, and the Python class coding channel. So, ICR and instruction tuning, these are our trusted GPS on our journey. So brace yourself for a thrilling ride that is more twisty than a pretzel in a yoga class. This is what I would have said, but since I'm looking for a broader audience today, and you are lucky, today I'm beginner friendly. Isn't that amazing? So you know that AI can simulate human language. ChatGPT is the perfect example. And what I want to show you today is that AI can simulate physical laws. You might be amazed, how is this possible? Causality finally resolved with AI. Well, you are in for a surprise. And the next next step is AI can simulate the human behavior because the human behavior after the human language is a chaotic system. So it is not at all as simple as physical laws, but human behavior has some beautiful adaptation rules we can program into AI. So welcome, all beginners. This is the session for you. Now you know the chain of thought and the instruction fine-tuning are two different techniques that we use to improve the performance for large language model like JetGPT and GPT-4 for unseen task. Unseen task means something the model has not been trained on. And there's now a new paper, 23rd of May, 2023, and it is called the COT Collection. And this is a huge data set from some very intelligent people, and they have 1.8 CO2, COT uh, data, where we can now fine tune our large language model. And you're not gonna believe it, but they have here a combination of chain of thought and fine tuning. And you might ask, so what is it? Now, chain of thought is a reasoning process where the model solves tasks step by step. So if you have an input to ChatGPT, you present here the chain of thought as a step by step process. I will show you an example in a minute. So chain of thought is used to generate rationals that explain the reasoning process behind each task. So you say, hey, I want that you do this and this, and you do it at first in this step, and then this step, and then you take the third step. So those rationals are then used to train the model, helping it to understand 100 examples, 1,000 examples, 10,000 examples. And then the model somehow gets, okay, if I have to solve a similar task in the future, I know how to do it. Now, instruction fine-tuning, on the other hand, is a technique where the model is also now fine-tuned on a specific task, but now, and this is the main difference, using a set of instruction. Now, if you ever have been at the military and you had the drill of a military sergeant, you know exactly what an instruction is. An instruction provides guidance and how to perform the task. So you see, the model learns to follow this instruction. There is no reasoning, no rational, no step by step. If your drill sergeant tells you, hey, you have to do this, you do it, no question asked. So you see sometimes, for this system, if it has some clear instruction, it's not going to think, hey, what should I use? Should I argue about it? Should I start a philosophical discussion about it? No, you follow, if you were chat GPT or GPT-4, you follow the instruction. And the instruction can be wrong. Never mind, you solve the task. So as you see in the context of the paper of the CO2 collection, 
This instruction fine tuning is also used in conjunction with the chain of thought to further improve the model performance. And this is amazing. Let me show you why. So let me give you an example. What exactly is a chain of thought command? So we have here instruction and question, options and answer, and the famous rationale behind all of this. So instruction and question is easy. What is the derivative of the function f of x is x square? You have a set of options. You have the correct answer. And since this is the training data set that the system has to learn, you have to give a rational, an explanation. And you say the derivative of a function gives the rate of change of a function at any point. For the function f of x, the derivative can be found using the power rule of differentiation, which state that the derivative of x is exactly this. Applying this rule, we find this solution. Beautiful. Now you might ask, hey, and a chain of thought with instruction fine tuning? Now we have the same structure, instruction and question, option, answer, rational. And you might say, hey, this looks conspicuously similar to the other one. And you are absolutely right. And the first time I saw it, I thought, what is the difference? But if you look at it in this way, so at first we have the COT and then COT plus instruction, you see, it is in the language, it is in the word, it is in the commands you give an LLM. Language builds our world. So in COT, we have what is the derivative of the function f of x. And with the instruction base, you say, apply the power rule for, you give a clear instruction, a clear command. Apply this rule, this instruction to exactly the same content, find the derivative. But you see, it makes a difference for the machine, for the LLM, for the AI to learn this. And the rationale is the instruction asks to apply the power rule for differentiation to find the derivative of a function. The power rule states. So you see, here you are in the, the negotiation phase, and here you are in the command phase. But they are similar. And this is if you combine them. They are really powerful. So again, instruction fine tuning used to train the model to follow specific instructions. And COT, chain of uh, sorts rationals, are used to teach the model, the reasoning process behind each task. And when you combine those two together, they can significantly improve the model's ability to solve unseen tasks. But, but unfortunately, this is not true for any model science, because only the large LLM, so 100 billion parameters plus, could solve such novel task with COT prompting. The effectiveness does not hold for a small, smaller language model as well. So this was the idea for a new work, and some days ago they published this. So what it did, it took a small model, a Flan T5, a pre-trained language, a pre, a fine-tuned and pre-trained language model T5 from Google, the 3 billion parameter size and the 11 billion parameter size. And they continue to fine-tune this Flan T5. Now on the 1.8 million single data, instruction here from this uh, chain of thought collect collection data set. So they continued fine-tuning, 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 and they have found or designed a new LLM, if you want. I think it's something like R2D2 or something like this. And then they checked the performance. And you see this are really tiny models, 3 billion and 11 billion parameter models. And they say, now it holds. Now we are in the position that we can say, okay, if we do this combined training, and imagine this uh, 1.8 million data, so you have to use quite a lot of it. So then the effectiveness now holds even for a smaller language model, like the 3 billion and the 11 billion models.
So this is great. So now you see, even if you have smaller models, if you continue fine tuning a lot of, yeah, the performance increases and you get the performance that the large LLMs like JetGPT and GPT-4 have. This is great. And now comes the part where you start to think, hey, can this chain of sort be a kind of a substitute for some reasoning, maybe even some logical reasoning, interacting with an LLM? And I think, yes, the chain of thought approach can be seen as a method to instill a form of reasoning into those LLMs. You provide a step-by-step -step explanation or a rational for how a particular conclusion is reached. So this CO2 can help the LLM model understand the reasoning process behind the decision or answer. So even, of course, there are still statistical models that generate outputs output based on patterns they've learned from the training data. They do not understand any logic in the human do. I know this. This is the limitation. But otherwise, techniques like chain of thought can be valuable tools for improving the performance of LLM on a wide range of tasks and for making their outputs more interpretable and reliable. So this was the sentence for the grandmothers in my new audience group. Yes. So you see, even small models, if you continue fine-tuning them on the COT and the instruction base, they improve their performance. And now I know what you're going to ask. You say, hey, Newton's law of motion. Eh? And it can be expressed also to fluids, considering fluids as composed of infinitesimal, infinitesimal pieces, ex each exerting forces upon the neighboring pieces, or the Euler momentum equation as expression of Newton's second law adapted to fluid dynamics. Can I formulate you now the physical laws, the laws of nature, the laws of physics, as a set of instruction for? a language model, an AI model that is based on language to find out how a physical body behaves in the real world? Well, yeah, because the law of physics can be considered. Now, in this computer science area, both as logic and a chain of thought, depending on the content. So let's have a look at this. Laws of physics are logic in the sense that they are consistent, universal principles govern the behavior of the physical world, empirical observation, mathematical description. You know all of this. Chain of thought. When applied to solve a specific problem or to understand a specific, a specific phenomenon, you throw a stone. The law of physics can involve a chain of thought. This is because applying those laws often requires a step-by-step -step reasoning process. I take the stone. The stone has a certain weight. There is a certain system surrounding me, air. There is a certain drag coefficient. There is a certain whatever. There is wind. There is 100 parameters. But to understand how an object will move under an influence of a particular force, one might start with Newton's second law, apply to specific conditions, and follow a series of logical steps to arrive at a solution how far away I can throw this stone. Now, both aspects are important, but remember, if we use from OpenAI the code interpreter, this is exactly what is happening. In the language model, you present a problem, and the language model says, okay, I chose now to activate the code interpreter as a plugin or whatever. I have here my Python calculation of the trajectory of the path of the stone that I'm throwing with a certain weight, with a certain velocity, with a certain acceleration, with a certain whatever uh, environmental parameters I have. And you can calculate this. This is what you can do today with OpenAI LLMs and a new code interpreter. You can calculate how many meters this stone will touchdown again. So this is nothing new. But whenever we're talking about logic, you know, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Tractatus Logico Philosophicus, die Welt ist alles, was der Fall ist. So therefore, forget about logic. Get rid of it. This is the center that counts. <laughs>
<laughs> so in the context of training 9LLM, an instruction based on Newton's second law, for example, could serve as a directive for how the model should predict the behavior of an object under the influence of a force like gravity. So the instruction might look like apply Newton's second law to predict the acceleration of an object given its mass and its force applied to it. Yes, it can be that easy. If your code interpreter knows Newton's second law and can perform the calculation. Now, this chain of thought rational would then provide a step-by-step -step explanation of how this instruction is applied to solve a specific problem. Given a specific mass and force, the CO2 rational would explain how to use this to calculate the resulting acceleration. If we have strong side winds, if we have whatever parameter else, you can go through all the different rationales, check them and say, and now I'm ready to calculate the mathematical problem and find a simple solution. Hey, those LLMs run in this supercomputer, cloud supercomputer center at Microsoft. So they are able to solve your Newton's second law. So you see, in this way, the instruction provides a general rule or a procedure for the model to follow, while the COT rational helps the model understand the reasoning process by this, applying this rule or any other rules to a specific situation. So you see, the combination of instruction and chain of thought can help the AI model make more accurate and reliable prediction, and the validation of this we have in the paper I showed you. Yeah, we can go here in the complexity of the physical systems, incredible complex, yes, yes, yes. We have limitations of the AI understanding. LLMs have no innate understanding of physical, phys physical concepts. Humans don't. Humans have also no idea. They don't have an innate understanding of physical concepts. This is true, but also 99% of all people I know have no innate understanding of physical concepts. So I think this is on par. Whatever. Using AI to make prediction about behavior physical system based on the law of physics is a complex task that goes, I don't know, beyond, but at the current capabilities of AI technology, see here OpenAI code interpreter who calculates what the language model gives him as input data. Now, we are not limited to a linear chain. There is now this beautiful tree of sorts. So the chain of sort methodology is now developed in a two-dimensional mesh, if you want. This three of sorts advanced methodology in the context of LLMs and the physical world, a TOT approach could allow the model to explore multiple possible outcomes or scenarios based on the different decision on action. If you want to learn more about the TOT, I have here on my homepage an uh, in-depth review, tree of sorts versus chain of sorts for LLM. I show you the exact difference between those two methodologies. So if you're inter interested in a more detailed mathematical description, this is the link you can follow. Yeah. So as I told you, I will show you that AI can simulate physical laws in the real world, I think. We have touched upon this, and you remember, there was another thing that I told you, and the other thing was about, can an LLM, an AI system, somehow simulate or predict human behavior? So we go from a language understanding LLM to a human behavior understanding LLM. And do not underestimate the power of human language. Whatever we do, we are able to communicate, describe our actions, think about future actions in the human language. So if you have almost all the human language in the internet within a GPT-4 system, theoretically, the power of the human language describing human behavior in the real world is really intense. So therefore, can we formulate it in a complex pattern of instruction? 
And no coincidence that I just showed you the transition from chain of sorts to tree of sorts and then to mesh of sorts, three dimensional mesh of sorts. So we can here think about human behavior as a response to a complex pattern of instruction if you want to simulate this on a supercomputer. Given different states of the system around us, yes, 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 we have rules, norms, expectations that guide our behavior, physical laws and constraint in our environment. And of course, everything is incredible complex. But hey, we have ChatGPT, GPT-4, and it is able to communicate with us in the human language. So we have to start sometimes. And of course, the beginning, it will be a simplification. Of course, it will not map the complete complexity of human behavior. But we have to start. So, in theory, a sufficiently complex and well-trained AI model, and I mean here especially a large language model with some additional help of other AI submodules, could potentially simulate certain aspects of human behavior and not just the human language. I think the human language is here really the first building block, the stepping stone for further evolution of our AI systems. Of course, understanding and simulation are two completely different worlds. If you sit here in a real cockpit, or if you go just for a training with Lufthansa, and you're sitting somewhere here in this, in a, in a, in a building and you're training here, uh, yes, it is different, but we need both. So, yes, of course, we start with simulation. Well, of course, the complexity of human behavior is really, really hard to understand and to code, but our language model are unbelievable flexible. So human behavior, incredible complex, influenced by a wide range of factors, physical environment, our mental, emotional state, our belief, our values, our past experiences. But all of this we express in the human language. We can describe in a human language. And all the human language is within an AI system. Our social, our cultural context, everything is reflected in our language. So don't underestimate the power if you can control human language. This is something important. Yeah, there are ethical and privacy considerations, of course. I mean, just, <laughs> just think about in, in London, the, a British banker, if you look at his garage where his Aston Martin and his Rolls Royce are parked, you know, I've seen a garage that has a floor heating and has a climate control area for the car, yeah? I'm sitting here in a house that has no heating from, from the floor and I have no climate control here in my room. So <laughs> I would say the car has a better surrounding than I have. So I don't want to know every possible human, yes, privacy. I guess those bankers can keep their privacy. I'm not really interested to have a direct comparison between their lifestyle and my lifestyle. But anyway, so we have here a transition from simulating human language. And I think GPT-4 is really a positive example of what is possible given ethical guide rails, given legal guide rails, and and and, to simulating now human behavior, maybe based on a pure human language base, but also describing the physical interaction in the, phys in the real physical world. So I think this is a significant leap in the evolution of artificial intelligence. So we have a transition from language understanding to behavior understanding, if we can also include the laws of physics that describe the real world objects. So our LLM move more or less now from language to behavior. This raises a lot of concerns and a lot of questions. And I'm interested in this. So what I did is I, I built a, a system where I have four GPT-4s, three GPT-4s, that have a particular role and they discuss with each other. 
They analyze situation and programmed each machine a different way to have a certain role of communication, a certain role of logic argumentation, and a certain role of emotional fears. And you can simulate this. And I let this run for hundreds and thousands runs. And I, I listen in. I want to understand what's happening, how is the system actually today, what is it capable of? I, I have to get a feeling what the system can and cannot do, how it argues, how it contradicts something, how it is, and how I have to become better in programming those systems to specific argumentation patterns. If you want to see one of the simplest simulated argument, uh, communication on the topic of AI education in schools, yes or no, and what factors we should think about, what are ethical concerns, how does it have a, uh, and in future terms here, some importance, I copied, I think, about 30, 40 rounds of communication here. And I published this on my on my homepage, and you go here to GPT-4 argues on AI education in schools, and you can read this. If you're interested to see how or where the system is today, you can read this. Now, currently, chain of thought is a hot topic, and there are a lot of, I don't know, models coming up and whatever, but really, the really important thing is happening now here in the inclusion of causality, maybe logic argumentation with chain of thought. And there's a beautiful uh, public preprint, a publication here, May 24, 2023, towards revealing the mystery behind chain of thought, a theoretical perspective. And this is the archive preprint link. You can read the study. I would recommend you have a look at the studies. And they show, the authors show that LLMs with a chain of thought are capable of solving a general class of decision-making problems, a very, very specific class of decision-making problems known as dynamic programming. And it is kind of a, a mystery how they, how they manage this. And if they can do this, then of course they have no problem in tackling complex real-world tasks. So, they did some extensive experiments on four tasks and showed that while the classical transformer always failed to predict the answer in a direct way, in a zero shot way, without augmentation, they can consistently learn to generate the correct solution if you give them a step by step explanation, if you give them sufficient chain of thought demonstration to learn pattern, to learn complex pattern, to learn logical pattern, maybe even to learn, yeah, argumentation patterns. So this is where research is today. And yeah, it's a little bit uh, mathematical, but interesting because this, they, they look at how complex has a model to be without a chain of thought. And they found that the transformer, they cannot directly output the correct answer here for basic arithmetic or equation task. Unless the model size of this classical transformer without COT grows here in a super po polynomial way with respect to the input length. So this becomes very expensive, very intense in computer to, in compute time. So they say to solve this task, this arithmetic task, equation task, everything is standardized and, and without here a chain of thought. They would need to have a size in terms of the number of parameters, of free trainable parameters, that grows faster than any polynomial function of the input length. So this is a limitation. But then, when they analyzed now the chain of sort method here, they found that the problem can be solved if you apply a transformer with a chain of sort method. So this is now fascinating. It's a little bit mathematical to understand, but amazing anyway. This was it for today. It was a kind of a little bit different approach. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a little bit of fun. 
and maybe I see you in my next video.